Today we begin a brand new series entitled Playlist, where over the next few weeks we're going to be journeying together to take a look at some of the popular songs in our culture and the meaning behind those songs. And then we're going to look into God's Word and to see specifically what He has to say about the meaning of these songs and the questions that so many of us are asking. So many times we fall into the trap of comparing ourselves to others. We wish that we had their looks, their talents, and their abilities. But what if we could see ourselves through the eyes of our Creator? What if we are perfect? You are perfect. God has created you exactly the way that He wanted you to be. I want you to listen to a video rendition of a very popular song entitled, Scars to Your Beautiful. I had always struggled with my weight growing up, like struggled to uh, feel pretty enough. I just never fit in. I was always, you know, the oddball. It was like, if you see a group full of horses, I was the zebra. I really did focus so much on my outer image and I felt like I didn't know who I really was. As a 12 year old, I had brain surgery. I have a six inch scar and 18 stitches. When I hit puberty, I got a lot of acne, especially on my face, and teenage girls are ruthless. <laughs> I couldn't be a part of their group, so they kind of like treated me different. You know, I went through so many years, I couldn't um, even look people in the eyes. Because when I looked in the mirror, I saw who I really was as this broken, hurting child. I thought I was stupid, and I was worthless. She just wants to be beautiful, she goes unnoticed, she knows no limits, she craves attention, she praises an image, she prays to be sculpted by the sculptor. Oh, she don't see the light that's shining, deeper than the eyes can find it, maybe we have made a blind so she tries to cover up her pain. Cut her woes away Cause cover girls don't cry After their face is made But there's a I first got my patch, but my mommy and daddy told me that I'm beautiful with my patch. So today when I think about that scar, I feel like it's God's mark on my life. When God made me, he knew what I was going to struggle with. Just knowing that there is a greater love, that's all that actually ended up mattering to me. Now I realize that the reason why I didn't fit in was because I wasn't supposed to fit in. I was, I was uh, special. I don't look like a model in a magazine, but I know that I'm beautiful. Now I see a strong woman that God has created with a purpose. And so it doesn't really matter what people around you think. Um, it matters what God thinks. Yeah, <laughs> I am pretty beautiful. <laughs>
beautiful no matter what. Well, today, go ahead, you can clap. I'm excited because today we kick off a brand new series, and if this is your first time at North Star, I want to take a moment to welcome you. We're very excited that you're with us. The series that we're going to be in over the next four weeks is entitled Playlist. What we're going to do is we're going to take some of the songs that are very popular in our culture, and we're going to look at them because they're modern-day parables. They're stories that tell a little bit about life and the struggles that so many of us face in our lives on a daily and even a weekly basis. In this particular song that we just listened to, uh, I believe with all of my heart, it's a struggle that so many of us have. In fact, many of you sitting here today, you're probably thinking to yourself, especially those of you who are men, you're thinking to yourself, well, he's going to talk specifically to women. No, I'm talking to everyone today. Because all of us, if we were really honest just for a moment, probably would say this. We would say that if we had an opportunity, there is something about ourselves we would like to change. Uh, Now, I don't know what that is for you, but I'm sure there's something about yourself that you would go, if I could change this, I would like to change this. So I want to start today by saying this. I've been praying for you all week because I believe that if this message can get inside of the hearts of each and every one of us across all of our campuses, those who are joining us online and from around the world, I believe that this message could really make a difference in your life, that it could really begin to change the way that you look at yourself and maybe even some of the struggles that you struggle with personally. Today, I want to talk to those of us who feel less than, not smart enough, not good enough, physically insecure, maybe you feel unattractive in some way. And I know that statistics tell us that this is a reality that many of us face. And I think if everybody was to be honest with themselves, they would just say, hey, if I could change this about myself, I would. In fact, did you know that 91% of women say that they are unhappy with their bodies? Now, the percentage for men is far lower than that, but ladies, let me just tell you something. That's because as men, we are better about lying to ourselves than you are. I mean, that's just a reality, okay? And so, so many of us struggle with this idea of, of, of who we are and really our self-image and the way that we were made and the way that we were oftentimes created. You see, most of us wish that we could change something. In fact, let me just say this. I, I remember when I was growing up, there were some things about myself that I wanted to change. Um, this may be hard for you to believe, but when I was in junior high school, I was probably about 125 pounds. I was six foot tall, which means I was like very lanky, very skinny. Um, my, I, I've always been a person who has really long legs. Now, let me just tell you why that's bad. Because if you've got long legs and you put on shorts, it doesn't matter what pair of shorts you put on. They always are too short. It just doesn't work out right. And so I was very self-conscious of my legs. I oftentimes didn't want to dress out in the gym. Uh, I didn't want to wear shorts because I always felt like they were too short. I was always trying to figure out how before those really long shorts came along, uh, I was trying to figure out how to have longer shorts because I was just embarrassed. And I remember that in middle school, um, there was this contest they had. It was called the Mr. Legs Contest. And the only reason that I won the contest is because my girlfriend poured a whole bunch of money into the jar to make sure that I was the winner. I mean, I wouldn't have won any other way. But I was self-conscious, and I wanted to change that about myself. Now, there was something else I wanted to change. I had a learning disability. And that learning disability, many of you, if you've been here very long at North Star, you've heard me talk about this, but it defined who I was. And there were moments in my life that people would make fun of me, that teachers would say things to me. And if I had the opportunity to change it, I would change it. It wasn't until I was uh, 16 years old and I had committed my life to Christ that I really began to understand that a lot of these things about myself I didn't like were, very, uh, were the very things that God himself had placed inside of me and that he had uniquely made me as an individual and that as I embraced those things and understood that I was created in the image of God, that I could live my life differently and really begin to see myself differently. The song that we listened to just a few moments ago is a song that is t- entitled Scars to Beautiful. It was written by a young lady by the name of Elisa Carr, and Elisa was the daughter of a hairstylist. 
Now, let me tell you the story of why she wrote this song. When Elisa was growing up, she had really, really bushy hair. It was really frizzy, and she didn't like it. And so she started trying to take the frizz out of her hair because her mother was a hairstylist. Uh, she was able to do that. But what happened is over time, because she had kept stripping her hair and stripping her hair and stripping her hair, it eventually began to fall out in clumps. And she found herself at a place that because her hair was falling out, she didn't feel beautiful any longer. And she wrote this song, and every time she performs it, she performs it without makeup because she wants to help everybody understand that beauty is from the inside. Beauty is not necessarily about the outside. In fact, today what I have done is I have decided to take the lyrics of this song, and even though they're directed towards ladies, I've wanted to use them in a way that every single one of us could identify with the words. If you'll notice in your message notes, and I want to encourage you to go ahead and take those out, I have written uh, kind of in parentheses and changed the song a little bit so that we can look at it together to kind of have a little bit of a better understanding of what the song says. Now, I want you to just look at the words with me. It says, we just want to be beautiful. We go unnoticed. We know uh, no limits. We crave attention and we praise an image. Now, let's just be transparent with each other. Isn't it true that we all want to feel beautiful? Uh, guys, isn't it true that you want to be handsome? Maybe the word beautiful doesn't work for you, but you want to be handsome. You want to be good looking. You want to look good, right? And isn't it true that, that oftentimes we don't want to go unnoticed? We want people to, to notice us. We want people to treat us like a, like a human being, like a person. And then listen to what it says. It says, we pray to be sculpted by the sculptor. Oh, we don't see the light that's shining. Deeper than the eyes can find it. And she's talking about there's something that is on the inside. And that that, that beauty can, can be something that shines outwardly and it changes everything. Maybe we have made ourselves blind, so we try to cover up our pain and cut our woes away. Because cover girls don't cry after their, after, after their face is made. Now, what she's saying is that every one of us want to be noticed. We all want people to think that we're beautiful, that we're handsome, that, that we really are significant, and that we are important. And you see, for many of us, if we really were honest with ourselves, and if we really dug down deep on the inside you would say, you know, sometimes I feel alone. I don't think that anybody else has the struggle that I have. But I'm here to tell you today that it is a universal struggle and that many of us in our lives, when we're really honest with ourselves, if we genuinely had the opportunity to change something about ourselves, we would. You see, culture says that it's the way that you look. Culture has so, I guess you could say, influenced the way that we look at each other and the way that we think about each other that many of us find ourselves with these deep scars in our lives because we feel like we don't ever measure up when it comes to beauty, when it comes to self-image, when it comes to significance and who we are as an individual. Today, I hope to change that. Today, I hope to help you see something that maybe you've never seen before. And if you're here and you're not a follower of Jesus, let me just go ahead and say that as, as I speak today, I want you just to listen to the words that I'm going to say. And I want you maybe to just open your heart a little bit and to think about how maybe if you could begin to see yourself through the eyes of God, you would begin to see God in a very different way. You see, I really believe this. I believe the reason that so many people today don't believe in God or that they're kind of pushing away from the church and they're pushing away from God, and maybe you're here today and that's you, I want to just tell you this because I really believe this with all of my heart. It's not that you want to not believe in God. It's that you don't believe in the God that other Christians have portrayed to you. And can I tell you something? I, I, I believe that, and, and, and I understand that, because many Christians have given you a very false view of who God really is. And I hope that just in these moments, you'll be able to discover who He is and to understand what He thinks about you. And when you enter into a relationship with Him, how that begins to change everything in your life. And so today, here's the bottom line. This is the one thought that I want to talk about for the next few moments. You know, with Christ... You are God's masterpiece. With Christ, you are God's masterpiece. And it's important for you to understand that. In fact, the Apostle Paul writes to us in the book of Ephesians. And he tries to help us to understand this a little bit more because he wants us to understand that when we see ourselves in Christ and the, the way that Christ has made us, we really begin to understand who we are and the image that we have. 
And you see, for many of us today, really and truly, it's an image problem. It's that we're not seeing ourselves through the right mirror. We're not looking at ourselves in the right way. And so with Christ, you are God's masterpiece. Now, let's look at this passage of Scripture in Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 10. It says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And what, what he's saying here is this. He's saying that if you're here today and you're not a follower of Jesus, God saves you by grace, and grace is undeserved merit. It just means that, that God gives you something that you don't deserve. And now he begins to unpack that. He says, and you can't take credit for this, talking about salvation or, or belief. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things that we have done. So none of us can boast about it. And you see, the image problem is this. You think that in your mind you can make yourself right with God. You think that by being a good person and by attending church, and by maybe um, giving money, or maybe serving the poor, or serving people in the community with your hands and your feet, and trying to be like Jesus, you think that that is going to earn you salvation. And what Paul says is, no, that can't earn you salvation. He said, salvation comes by grace, through faith. It is not by works, the things that we do. And, and we have to understand that. And see, some of you, the reason you're struggling in your life today is because you're trying to work yourself into a relationship with God because it's an image issue. And God wants you to know that you will never be good enough, you will never be able to do enough, and you will never be able to say all the right things in order that you can have a relationship with Him. In fact, the only way that you can have a relationship with Him is by grace through faith. And that's what Paul tells us. And then he elaborates on that. Then he says this, and this is where we're going to focus today. He says, for we are God's masterpiece. And there's the word that we're going to talk about. He says, we're God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. Now, here's what I want to do at all of our campuses. I want you to look at the person sitting next to you, and I want you to say, you are God's masterpiece. Tell them, you are God's masterpiece. Go ahead and tell them that. Just say that to them. You are God's masterpiece. Now, look at the person on the other side of you and say to them, you are God's masterpiece. Tell them, you are God's masterpiece. You are God's masterpiece, right? Now, here's what's important to understand. God don't make no junk. You see, he doesn't. You may think that God makes junk, but God doesn't make junk. And you may think to yourself, oh, well, you just don't understand, Marty. Christ makes us anew. What it means is this. The old is gone. The new has come. And, and we have to understand that in Christ, when we enter into a relationship with him, he makes all things new in our life. All things. Everything is made new in Christ. Now, the Greek word, it's an important word for us to look at. For those of you maybe that aren't familiar with church, the reason that we look at the original Greek language is because in the New Testament, when the writers of the New Testament were writing, they wrote in the original Greek language. So when you see a word, you go back to the original Greek, it gives you the definition of what the word means. The word masterpiece is the word poema, and poema just means this. It's a beautiful poem, a, per a perfect workmanship, a tapestry, or a, a tapestry, and, and so it's important for us to understand that it's a beautiful poem, a perfect workmanship, and that when you become a new follower of Jesus, when you enter into a relationship with God, you become this masterpiece, and I want you to imagine with me just for a moment that there is this blank canvas that God begins to paint on with your life. You see, you are God's poetic statement. You are God's masterpiece. And what culture says to you is that you're not perfect. Culture says that you have flaws. Culture says that you don't look right. Culture says that you can't be smart enough. Culture says that you're not beautiful enough. But what God says is you are a masterpiece. You are beautiful just the way you are. And the things that you often want to change are the things that often become attractive. And they're the things that oftentimes you think, hey, this doesn't make me look good. But God says, you are perfect and you are beautiful. See, what God wants you to understand is that he is the artist and you are the art. He is the potter and you are the clay. He is the painter and you are the canvas. You are God's crowning achievement. You are his masterpiece. And the thing that most of us never really mature to and understand inside of our relationship with God and inside of our faith is we never really begin to understand that we are God's masterpiece. 
We are his crowning achievement. In fact, some of you are arguing in your mind right now. You're thinking to yourself, you don't understand, Pastor Marty. I mean, I need thinner legs, slender, slimmer hips, wider teeth, fuller hair, bigger muscles, or whatever it is. You, you're thinking to yourself, if I could just be different. And some of you are thinking, I want to be smarter, I want to be a better athlete, and I want to be funnier. If I could just do that, then I would be completely different. What you believe about yourself on the inside eventually manifests itself on the outside. And you see, you're believing something on the inside that causes you to try to perform for others and to think that you have to be something that you really don't have to be. And for many of us, we've bought into this idea, and what happens is we spend all of our life trying to change everything about ourselves that we can, when in reality, God says, I made you a masterpiece. You are perfect just the way you are. And that's what I want you to see today is that you're a masterpiece, that God has made you uniquely and he has made you exactly the way that he wants you to be. You see, when you believe about yourself on the inside and it begins to manifest itself on the outside, for many of us, we've never believed on the inside what God wants us to believe. You see, in my own life, let me just tell you this. I remember when I was younger, uh, I, I thought to myself, you know, I hate my long legs. I mean, they're just ugly. I wish I could change them. I mean, there were so many things about myself that I wanted to change. I hated the fact that I had a learning disability. Uh, then later in, in life, when I was in college, I met Angela, and I'll never forget this. Angela and I became really good friends. We were hanging out together. Uh, one day, we were playing football. Uh, Angela was playing with us. There was a bunch of guys, a bunch of girls. We were playing football, having a great time. And I remember that later on, um, I had to wear shorts that day. And I remember later on, Angela said to me, she said, man, I love your sexy legs. I was in love immediately. I mean, the thing <laughs> that I hated the most about myself, she found attractive. I was like, I love this girl. And you know, it, it was amazing as we began to date, she loved the fact that I had a learning disability and that she, Angela was a straight A student in college, she had a great opportunity to really help me and to pour into me and, and, and to get through college. In fact, I told her when I graduated, I said, this really ain't my diploma, it's your diploma. I mean, she just poured into my life and helped me. And it was amazing, the thing that I thought was a weakness, she actually saw it as a strength and she, she loved me for it. And she cared deeply about me, and she cared deeply about the things in my life that, that oftentimes I found to be the hardest things. And you see, for me, it became a healing moment in my life where I began to realize that God had uniquely put me together and that he had given me these abilities, these learning disabilities that I had. In fact, let me just tell you this. One of the reasons that I teach the way I do now is because of the learning disabilities that I had. I often could not understand when a pastor would teach. And I just said, God, if you ever give me the opportunity to do that, I'm going to do it differently. And so when God put me in ministry, I just said, I'm going to make it as simple as I can so that, that anybody can understand, that everybody can walk out with something that applies to their life and makes a difference in their life as they walk through the week. And so what I thought was a weakness actually became a strength in my life. Now, I don't have anything good to say about my legs. I still don't like my legs. Um, I'm thankful that my wife thinks that they're sexy and that she loves me just the way that I am, and, and I, I appreciate that. You see, I want us to go a little bit further with this song, and I want us to look at some lyrics to understand what she continues to say that I think many of us need to see for ourselves. I want you to listen to these words, and I've made some adjustments so that we can look at it together, but I want you to listen to what is said here. You don't see that you're perfect, and let me just say this. There's some of you sitting here today, and you don't see that you're perfect. In fact, you think, I'm, I'm, I'm far from perfect. And, and let me just pause to say this, because I think it's important. For some of you, it's because somebody along the way helped you to start believing that. Maybe your dad or your mom told you that you weren't beautiful. Maybe they said things to you that caused you to begin to believe that, that you're not perfect. Maybe they told you that you weren't smart. Or maybe they said some things along the way that, that really began to take root inside of your heart. And you begin to believe it on the inside. And it's begun to manifest itself on the outside. For some of you, let me just go a little bit further. And I know it's painful. But for some of you, somebody has abused you in such a way that they used you. and they, they used you in such a way that you begin to think on the inside, hey, you know what? I really am worth nothing. And you begin to believe that about yourself. 
And one of the reasons that you try to hide and one of the reasons that you do some of the things that you do is because in your mind, you do not think that you're worthy and you don't think that you'll ever be worthy. But I am here to tell you today that when you become a follower of Jesus and when you were created in the image of God, that in Christ, your life is significant and you are important and you matter. And Jesus was the master at taking people who felt like they were a nobody, who felt like they did not belong, who felt like they were isolated and on the outside. And he would esteem them and lift them up. And ladies, let me just tell you something. Jesus did more for women than anybody in this world has ever done for women. He elevated them in a culture where they were pressed down. And he said, you are significant and you are beautiful and you matter. And men, it is important for us to understand that God created us in his image. And the thing about yourself that you don't like and the thing that you don't see as perfect, you have to understand that it is perfect because God created it. You don't understand you're worth it. It, it is what it says. And some of you, you don't feel worth it today. You think, man, my life is worth nothing. And you know what? I know that there are some of you on some of our campuses, you don't feel worth it, and you've even thought about taking your life. Because you say, you know what? My life just ain't worth it. And I'm here to tell you today, it is worth it. It is worth it. And in Christ, he has predestined and planned and purposed your life in a way that you could never imagine. And he wants you to know that you're worth it. And when the world around you says that you're not, and when Satan is whispering in your ear that your life doesn't matter, he wants you to know that it does matter and that you're worth it and that you matter to him. And then it goes on and it says, or that beauty goes deeper than the surface. And, and what she's saying there is, is that beauty is not just about what's on the outside, but it comes from the inside and it begins to work its way out and it begins to shine through. So to all the people that are um, hurting, let Christ be your mirror to help you to see a little bit clearer the light that shines within, the light that shines within. And so he wants us to understand that in Christ, when we begin to allow him to reflect who we really are, we begin to see ourselves very differently. And what we see as a flaw, all of a sudden we begin to see as a strength. And we begin to see ourselves differently because we begin to understand that, hey, inside of us, there is this, this light that shines inside of us. There is this mirror that reflects the beauty of who God really made us. And then listen to what it goes on to say. It says, there's a hope that is waiting for you in the dark. You should know that you are beautiful just the way you are. You see, I really believe this today. If you had an opportunity to sit down with Jesus... And you were in a conversation with him and you would say, you know, Jesus, and I'm, I'm just going to use myself as an example. I'd say, you know, Jesus, I just don't like my legs. And you know, Jesus, I don't like the fact that that, that, was, that was given this learning disability because, you know, it, it's just hurt me in so many ways in my life. I think he would look at me and just say, Marty, you're beautiful just the way you are. And I made you just the way you are. And if you could see that and accept that and live through that and understand that all those things that you don't like are really and truly the things that actually make you beautiful, you would begin to live your life so differently. You see, when you and I are in Christ, we become God's masterpiece. And God don't make junk and you are beautiful. And he's made you just the way that you are. And he loves you just the way you are. You see, God loves you as his masterpiece. And God doesn't just love you equally. He loves you uniquely. And that is important. You see, if you're a parent, you'll understand this. I remember when Angela and I first had Ashley, I thought to myself, I will never be able to love someone as much as I love her. And, and, and I remember when, when Andrew, when, when Angela was pregnant, I was thinking to myself, I was so scared on the inside. Am I really going to be able to love him the way that I, I love this little girl? And you know what I discovered along the way? I don't love either one of them any less. I love them uniquely, and I love them in a different way. And it's amazing. It's amazing uniquely how God has allowed me to love my children and to love my wife and the people that he's placed in my life because they are special and he created you and you are special and he uniquely loves you in a way that you would never be able to understand. And you're still sitting there and let me tell you what you're thinking, especially for some of you men, you're thinking, but Marty, I want those big guns and that six pack. And ladies, you're thinking, I want to look hot in my yoga pants, even though you don't do yoga, right? I mean, you're just saying to yourself, hey, I want to look differently. 
But listen to me. Here's the thing you've got to understand. Students, you're thinking, I want to be popular in class. I wish I had more Instagram followers. I wish I looked like her. I wish I looked like him. And here's the thing you've got to understand. Who you are is what matters. Let me say that again. Who you are is what matters. And you see, what Paul teaches us in this passage of Scripture is that you are God's masterpiece. Who are you? God's masterpiece. This beautiful, beautiful picture, this poem, this beautiful picture that he's painted with your life. And he wants you to embrace it. And he wants you to know that he's made you perfect the way that you are. Ladies, no beauty shines brighter than Christ shining in your heart and through your life. We all know this. Let's just be honest for a second. I said this in, in one of our marriage series. You know, there, there, there are people that have natural beauty on the outside. A woman can walk into the room and turn everybody's head, but when she opens her mouth, she can become the most unattractive person in the room. Amen. Now, you know exactly what I'm saying. Some of, you, some of you hadn't caught up yet, but let me just tell you this. It's not because of what's on the outside. It's because of what's on the inside. It's an inner beauty that shines through. It's something that God does inside of us, and that light begins to shine out, and it makes us beautiful. Men, nothing is more attractive than godly confidence. A man that is born again in Christ, and from this inner spiritual character, he begins to live his life out. Guys, the most beautiful thing that you could do, the most God-honoring thing that you could do is to love your wife as Christ loved the church. That is sexy. Whether you like it or not, I'm just telling you, when you begin to love your wife in that way, it changes everything in your relationship. And you see, we think, oh, it's about the guns that I have. And when I'm saying guns, I'm not talking about the kind of guns you shoot. I'm talking about guns. We think it's about six-pack abs and the way that we look. And it's not all about the outer beauty. It's about the inside. And what God wants us to understand is that we are his masterpiece. We are his beautiful masterpiece. One of the things that Angela and I have been talking about a lot lately, and this, this is just one of those things that we realize. I'm now 50, Angela's 46. She's far more beautiful than I would ever be. I married way, way, way over my head. But we were talking a couple of weeks ago, and we were saying to ourselves, you know, our best days of our appearance are behind us. We're getting older. Please don't bring the camera in close. We're getting older. <laughs> And one of the things that we realize is we want to do it with grace. Just want to do it with grace. Just say, you know what, God? We're beautiful just the way you made us. Yes. And with grace, we want to age. And with grace, we want to display the beauty that you've given us. And, you know, I, I just there's something about the fact that one day when I'm 80 years old and Angela is 76 and we're going to be walking through the mall wrinkly and she's going to love me and I'm going to love her like crazy and she's still going to think i got sexy legs at 80 because they're long. I don't know why, but it just brings me comfort. And I think, hey, that's the way that it's supposed to be. Because you know what we understand? We're God's masterpiece. Created in the image of Christ. And I want to close with a couple of statements that I think are very, very important for you this morning. And I want you to write them down. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about them, but I want you to focus on these this week. Because if you can get these statements in your heart, here's what I know. They'll begin to make a difference in your life. The first one is this. God loves you deeply. Maybe you don't feel like you're loved. Maybe you don't feel like you should be loved. But God loves you deeply. And he cares more about you than anybody in this world will ever care about you. He loves you deeply, and he showed how much he loved you by sending his son Jesus to die on the cross for your sins. He paid a price that you will never be able to pay. He paid a debt that you owed that you will never be able to pay back. He paid that debt for you. That's how much he loves you. He bankrupt all of heaven. Secondly, the second thing I'd say to you is God values you highly. He values you. The value placed on your life was the value of heaven. God bankrupt heaven for you. He values you. Thirdly, God provides for you fully. God provides for you fully. He wants you to know that he will always provide for you. He will always be there for you. He will always care deeply about you. And then lastly, God planned you carefully. God planned you carefully. You see, maybe your friends have said, no, 
You're not perfect. God says you're a masterpiece. Maybe a teacher has looked you in the face and said, you know what, you're not going to amount to a whole lot or you're not going to make a whole lot with your life. Or maybe your parents have said that, but God says you're a masterpiece. And when you really begin to see yourself through his eyes, it really changes the way you begin to live your life. Because what you see sometimes as a flaw or something that you would change is something that he beautifully painted into your life. I pray today that you will see yourself as his masterpiece, his creation, and that from the inside, that beauty would begin to shine out. Let's pray together. With their heads bowed and their eyes closed, I'm going to read a passage of Scripture that's in your notes. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, Paul says, And I'm certain that God who began the good work within you will continue His work until it is finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. God has began a good work on the inside of you. You are His masterpiece. You are His creation. God don't make no junk and God don't make no mistakes. And he wants you to embrace the person that he has created you to be. Across all of our campuses with our heads bowed, our eyes closed and no one looking around. I wonder how many of you would say today, Pastor Marty, when you close today, because I'm going to pray here in just a few moments. I wonder how many of you would say, you know what? I really need to grow in this area. And I struggle sometimes seeing myself as God's masterpiece, but I really want to be able to do that this week. Would you, would you pray for me, Marty, in these next few moments? If that's you, would you just raise your hand right now? Every head bowed, eyes closed. There you go. Just raise them up just for a second. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you so much. And I'm going to pray for you right now. You can put your hands down. Father, I pray for every single person who's raised their hands. And God, they're acknowledging that they struggle in seeing themselves as your masterpiece. And they want to, Lord. They're, they're raising their hands to say, I want to be able to see myself as God's masterpiece. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to be able to see ourselves as that. For those that maybe have, have been abused, for those that maybe for years have had people speak negative things into their life, I pray that God, through the power of your Holy Spirit today, you would just do a healing in their life. And that they would begin to see that even though someone took advantage of them or even though someone has hurt them, that God, that was never your intent because in your eyes, they are beautiful. And you have created them exactly to be who you want them to be. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed and no one looking around, I really believe that some of you have walked into some of our campuses today and you're sitting there and you're thinking to yourself, Marty, you don't know what I've been through the pain that I've caused others. I mean, nobody could ever love me. Nobody could ever care about me. Nobody could ever accept me for who I am. And I just want you to know today that God says, yes, he can. He loves you just the way you are. He doesn't care about the mistakes you've made. He doesn't care about all the things that you've done in your life. He just simply loves you. And if you have never experienced his grace and his love in your heart, I want to give you an opportunity right now in this moment to do that. You see, the way that we embrace God's love for us is by faith. The Bible says it this way. It says, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that is that if you'll believe that God sent his son Jesus to live a sinless, perfect life and to die on the cross for you, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And today, you can begin to experience his amazing love and a relationship with him in your heart right now. I want to invite you today to say yes. I want to give you an opportunity in this moment to say yes. Yes, I want to become a follower of Jesus. And if that's you, you can do that right now by praying a prayer, something like this in your heart, and just meaning it to God. Just say these words in your heart. Dear God, I know that mankind needs a savior. And I know that I can't save myself. 
Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And I believe God raised you from the dead. Right now, I confess you as my Lord, as my Savior, as the one who forgives and restores me. I am your masterpiece. Thank you, Jesus, that my past is forgiven and that I have a relationship with you. I'm a new creation in Christ because I've said yes to you. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, if you just prayed that prayer, it's the greatest decision you'll make in your life. You are God's masterpiece in Christ Jesus. And he's going to do something beautiful with your life. And so if you just prayed that prayer, I'm going to ask you to do something very brave. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I would in no way want to embarrass you. But I want to pray for you. And so I'm going to ask you, if you just prayed that prayer with me across all of our campuses, those of you who are online right down there below you, you can click on the hand. But if you just prayed that prayer with me, would you just raise your hand so I can pray for you? God bless you. Somebody else. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Someone else. We see your hands across our campuses and online, and I want to pray for you right now. Father, thank you for every single hand that's gone up today. We thank you for every person who said yes. And God, we pray that you would help them to begin to grow in their newfound relationship with you. So Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you that we are your masterpiece. And God, in that we rejoice and we give you praise. For we ask this in Jesus' name and God's people said together, Amen and amen. Hey, North Star, let's put our hands together and celebrate those who committed their life to Christ. Amen. Hey, if that's you today, let me just encourage you to do a couple of things. On the back of your connection card, right up at the very top, it says, today I'm becoming a follower of Jesus. And if you feel comfortable just checking that box off, we're not going to come by your house and visit you, show up on your front doorstep. But this week, we're going to send you some information that will help you to know how you can begin to grow in your relationship with Christ and how we can come alongside and help you with that. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can just text uh, to 555-888 the word yes, and uh, we'll have a little form there that you can fill out and follow up with you. And we'd love to get you plugged in and get you apart so that you can begin to grow in your relationship with Christ. Here in just a few moments, we're going to receive the offering here at North Star. If you're a first-time guest, we don't want you to give anything. In fact, uh, we here at North Star believe that as followers of Jesus and the members of this church, it's our um, responsibility through our tithes and offerings to support the local ministry that God has here. And one of the ways that we do that is we believe in irrational generosity. And across all of our campuses today, because we know that there's a hurricane out in the Gulf and there's going to be a lot of destruction that's going to follow. Just like we helped in Houston, we're going to have an opportunity to help right here in our own state. And we would love for you to be a part of giving to our hurricane relief fund. You can do that in the offering this morning. You can go online uh, or you can text to 555-888 and uh, be a part of giving. Uh, if you'll just place in there um, hurricane relief and uh, that way you can just give and be a part. We would love for you to do that because we believe that uh, God's called us to be irrationally generous. And we've got an opportunity to be the hands and the feet of Jesus, not only here in our community, but also right here in our state as we're going to minister to people. And some, I know this, some of you are here today, uh, you're from other parts of the state. Uh, some of you at the beach at our other campuses, Callaway, uh, we know that you've joined us today because you're trying to get away from the hurricane. And I want to take a moment to pray for you, to pray for your families, to pray for everyone who's in the path of this hurricane, that God would be with us and watch over us. And we hope that as we give, that we can be a part of being the hands and the feet of Jesus to make a difference in your life and in the life of your community. And so I'm going to ask you if you would to pray with me at this time. Father, um, I thank you so much that you tell us in your word that God, when we are irrationally generous, when we're obedient to you, that God, you pour out a blessing upon our life. And for every person that gives today, God, I pray a blessing upon them and over them that you would pour it out, press down and running over, God. That as they give to you, that you would take and that you would abundantly bless them. But God, that you would take the tithes and the offerings of this church and that you would use them to make a difference in the world that's around us. That in the communities that are going to be devastated by this storm, that God, we get an opportunity to make a difference. And we pray that you would help us to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. That as we go and as we give, that we would be able to make a difference. 
And so, Father, we thank you, we praise you, and we ask you to bless this offering now. In Jesus' name, amen. At all of our campuses, as well as online, if you want to give, uh, if you'll notice at the campuses, to the left or to the right, there's some buckets. You can pass them towards the inside. There for, there for those of you online, uh, you can just click on the Give button. You can participate and be a part as we give today of our tithes and our offerings. As we do that, I want to remind you of something. Uh, you'll notice in your program today, there's a little tiny, uh, I guess you could say, insert that tells you a little bit about North Star University. This is something new that we're doing here at North Star, and we're really, really excited about it. It's an opportunity for you to grow spiritually. And uh, one of the ways that we do that is through our growth track. And so North Star University is going to be a part of the growth track. When you've been through step one, step two, step three, and step four, this is another opportunity for you. We have an apologetics class. We have a class on parenting. Uh, We have several other classes that we're going to be offering. It's a great opportunity for you to go deeper in your relationship with Christ. We would love for you to get plugged in and be a part, and so we want to invite you to do that. You can do that by going to the website and just simply clicking on North Star University, and that way uh, you can get signed up right there. Hey, I hope that it's been a great day. Please be safe. Please keep your family safe. Know that we as a staff are praying for you and praying for your families. We are so thankful that you're here today to worship God, and we believe here at North Star that if we have been found by the grace of God, that has found people, that we go out and found people. God bless you guys. We'll see you again next Sunday.